It was the end of the Proterozoic Era and we suddenly moved in to the Paleozoic Era. And this is where the world changed significantly. The granite from the bottom of the oceans had risen and now we had continents. We had land upon which life could start to grow. But life as complicated as this grass, the lichens and the mosses was far away. We were just at the beginning of a new era. An era where the world was about to perform a miracle. It was about to get ready for extremely complex life to begin. Life such as the life we have with human beings, plants and animals that exist today. But there was going to be a long process in place for that to actually happen. For number one, the oceans started to teem with life. Rivers and waterfalls like the one behind me had more than just bacteria. There was now complicated life living in these waters. We had mosses and lichens start to edge out onto the surface of the earth, a bit like we can see here today. But that's not the end of the story. And to find out more, we're going to meet Marcos, who's going to share us more insights into how exactly it happened. Let's go. For 540 million years ago, it wasn't only the oceans that were changing. Yes, they were teeming with life. And yes, some of that life was starting to find its way onto the land. But because the continents had now collided to cause Pangaea, the first supercontinent, we now had landforms. And as you can see behind me, we've got a range of mountains. And these were going to change the way that the entire world worked in terms of weather and in terms of ecosystems, just like the ecosystem we can see here today. So let's go and find out exactly what happened. I can see Marcus right there waiting for us. Let's go ahead. So 540 million years ago, clearly the Earth started to change. The oceans start to become busier, teeming with life. The land around us changed its form. Mountains are created. Life started to migrate from the ocean to the land and the whole Earth came to life, setting up the stage for all life to thrive. And to help us understand more about it, Marcos is here waiting once again. Marcos, hello, sir. Hey, Gavin. How are you? Excellent, and you? Sorry about the delay. It took a long time to get here. Yes. Very, very impressive place indeed. Indeed. So 540 million years ago, we leave the Proterozoic Era and we move in to the Paleozoic Era. What's different? What has changed? Yeah, a lot has changed in that period of time. So it's the beginning of the Paleozoic era is what it's called the Cambrian Explosion. There was an explosion of complex life. This is why the Paleozoic era is also the beginning of what's called the Phanerozoic. Oh. And Phanerozoic, it means visible life. This time we're not talking about tiny little organisms, we're talking about different creatures. And in the beginning they lived in the ocean. Yes. So things like trilobites, things like ammonites, things like brachiopods. These were creatures that were living in the oceans and it's the beginning of big animals as we know them today. Right, and this life is in the ocean and it starts to consider moving onto the land. I mean, today, in 2024, we have life all over the land. Why did it move to the land and what were some of the first creatures that decided to make that shift? Exactly, so before and now we are surrounded by all of this vegetation, all of this greenery. Before then, nothing lived on land. 
nothing no animals no trees no plants anything just rocks just rocks and volcanoes and snow and ice and that was it so again this life form started in the oceans and they became also the first vertebrates like fish fish began to populate the oceans at some point there was a lot of different changes in the oceans that made those inhospitable as well so life decided to conquer land the wow. very first ones to do so were early plants so very early plants non-vascular plants like mosses and different uh, seed plants were the first ones to populate it after the plants then came the invertebrates different early insects and arthropods they decided to come as well and then a revolution the first vertebrates became to populate land as well. So now land was populated for the very first time in the Paleozoic. Right, and these continents that they're populating started to move. We have this shift and something remarkable happened. Yeah, so at one point we got what it's called a supercontinent. And this is when most of all the land masses of Earth unite in one. Wow. And that was called for the last one, Pangaea. There okay. were many supercontinents before, but the last one was called Pangaea. So imagine that suddenly you have a huge continent, of course, that disrupts a lot of this ocean circulation and patterns in the atmosphere. And what it was before, forests and swamps became a desert. So life had to adapt again to new conditions. So this is where, for example, the first reptiles came to play because they were adapted really well to this arid and desert conditions. Right, so we have life in the ocean, evolving, deciding to populate the land. We have plants, insects, anthropods, supercontinent appears. What happens next? So what happened next is really the end of the Paleozoic era, and this is a massive extinction. So unfortunately, life that flourished and diversified into all of these different species, including the earliest mammals, we started in the end of the Paleozoic, they came to a massive extinction that got rid of about 90% of the species in the oceans and 70% of the species on land due to a very catastrophic event. Okay, and what was that catastrophic event? So that catastrophic event we think now has a lot to do with a huge amount of volcanism that happened around what we know now as Siberia. Okay. A lot of CO2 spewed out in the atmosphere, changing the conditions and acidifying the oceans, warming land as well, and not allowing that life to flourish anymore. Wow, and I guess the creatures that lived on Pangaea at that time didn't have the ability to see it coming and then try to stop it happening. Exactly. Now this week, what we want you to do is think very carefully. Although we're not having a mass extinction on Earth, CO2 is rising at the moment and the environment is changing. And we want you to investigate that. And then we want you as a conscious human being who knows exactly what's going on and how you can act to think about how you individually can act to lower the CO2 in the atmosphere, but also empower your community, your school, even your home to take action to help mitigate that change in the climate. And we're very excited to move on to the next era next week. Marcos, it has been amazing. Amazing. See you next time.